Hello, my name is Erwin Rothenberg, and today we'll be discussing the pre-analytical phase, your error-prone zone. In recent years, the concept of what is needed to ensure the quality of laboratory testing has gone beyond performing traditional quality control procedures, which are focused primarily on the analytical phase. Quality monitoring now includes all phases of the testing process. The impetus for this has been the realization that up to 70% of all errors made in the laboratory occur during the pre-analytic phase, most of which arise from problems in patient preparation and sample collection and handling. Unlike the analytic and post-analytic phases, the processes of the pre-analytic phase often involve personnel that are not under the direct supervision of the laboratory, making these more challenging to control. It is important to constantly monitor the following activities to ensure the highest quality work during the pre-analytic phase. First, patient preparation. Often overlooked is the importance of providing correct instructions to the patient for the self-collection of specimens. Patients may need to fast, observe specific guidelines such as clean catch urine procedure, or collect samples over a 24-hour period prior to testing. Not following the correct instructions for sample collection has a direct impact on the quality of the samples received. Secondly, sample collection. For phlebotomy-related tasks, it is recommended that laboratories assess the competency of all drawing staff, whether they are part of the laboratory or not. It is also a good idea to track all rejected specimens, making sure to specify the reason for the rejection. For example, an increase in the number of samples rejected for insufficient quantity, for hemolysis, the wrong vacutainer used, and so on, may point to a phlebotomy training issue that needs to be addressed. Finally, specimen labeling, handling, and transport. Specimen labeling and patient identification procedures must be in place and followed. It is a requirement that laboratories utilize at least two unique identifiers for the correct identification of patients and their specimens. Equally important is specimen handling and transport. Are specimens centrifuged and aliquoted within the specified time? How about refrigeration or freezer requirements if testing cannot be performed immediately? Specimens received from outside collection sites pose a different risk for laboratories. Upon the receipt of specimens, utilize a checklist to ensure that all of the above requirements have been met prior to accepting the specimen. A specimen rejection policy is a must. Remember, successfully monitoring these pre-analytical phase steps in the testing process can prevent up to the potential 70% of all laboratory testing errors. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for our newest content. Go ahead and click on the description box below for related educational products or click on the little icon on the top right corner to view the products. Thank you very much.